Good morning, Hojo staff, students, and families. Ya Teabin. We're ready to start our day. It is Friday, September 11th. Everybody, please stand. Place your right hand over your heart. Our voices are off. Our bodies are still. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Friday. Today's a very important day. It's 9-11. And on 9-11-2001, a terrible tragedy happened in our country. And uh, a, a group of terrorists flew, um, hijacked some planes and uh, hurt and killed a lot of American uh, people. And we still remember them and that event that kind of changed everybody's life who was alive at that time. Um, everybody remembers that day and who was uh, who was old enough to remember. So it, it's one of those days where we say, you know what you were doing at the time that that took place. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about that in a moment. And let's listen to the um, a selection of music that Miss Knapp has uh, given us for this week. So I'm going to play it and you tell me. It's Friday now so you should remember who, what's, who this is and the name of the piece and the, co the composer. So let's play it and you tell me what we're listening to. Okay, shout it out. What were we listening to? Flight of the Bumblebee by Nikolai Rimsky-Korsakov. That's right. From the opera, Tale of the Tsar Sultan. Nice job. I have another selection to have you listen to, but we'll do that in a little bit. Um, let's do our poem for the week by Robert Louis Stevenson. And the name of the poem is Bed in Summer. In winter, I get up at night and dress by yellow candlelight. In summer, quite the other way, I have to go to bed by day. I have to go to bed and see the birds still hopping on the tree or hear, hear the grown-up people's feet still going past me in the street. And does it not seem hard to you when all the sky is clear and blue and I should ha like so much to play to have to go to bed by day? So. We're on the last few days of summer and it's the daylight is getting, the days are getting shorter and shorter and shorter until we have the shortest day of the year in December 21st and then the days start getting longer and longer and longer until the longest day in June. So let's talk about some art. Um, behind me was the large picture that we had been talking about. We had mentioned it a few times, Crack the Whip by Winslow Homer, and so some other pieces by Winslow Homer. He said this one is nor'easter. Look at those waves hitting the rocks in that storm, the nor'easter. And then we looked at this one, and it's called Fog Warning, also by Winslow Homer. And remember we talked about this gentleman here in the boat fishing uh, back in the day when um, this is probably not allowed right now for food purposes to just have a fish flopping around in a boat and safety reasons but things have changed times have changed this man is one of those people that we talked about when we said fanfare for the common man these hard working people 
And then we looked at another from yesterday. Freezing up, fair wind. And we looked at those young boys sitting on that boat. And that this piece, when it was painted, was we just what everyday common people were looked like. That Winslow Homer sitting on the shore could see people out on their boats, and this is what he saw, and that's what he painted. But it captures for us what time looked like, what people dressed like, and what things were like in another time, a time that's gone by. And here, the final one for the week, Winslow Homer, is Boys in a Pasture. Two young men sitting out there on a pasture. See how they're dressed? Different times. So now if Winslow Homer were alive today and taking a, uh, taking a painting of Boys in a Pasture, they wouldn't look quite the same, right? The pasture would look the same. The boys, what they like and what they like to do, all those things might be different because we are all product of the time that we were born. All right, so we don't forget, who do we have? Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper, that's right. Leonardo da Vinci, Vitruvian Man. Renoir, Girl with the Watering Can. Tell me who we have here. Washington Cross in the Delaware by Manuel Loitza. And now for some architecture, Washington Monument, that's right. U.S. Capitol Building, that's right, where all our laws are made by our senators and representatives. Front of the White House, back of the White House. You see this in the news all the time. And the piece that we were learning, this piece of architecture, also artwork, is the Lincoln Memorial. And when you go up the steps, you can see Lincoln, there's a statue of Lincoln sitting in a chair. And inside the Lincoln Memorial are all the words to the Gettysburg Address right, that we have learned the last couple years here at our school. So let's talk about some birthdays. We have two birthdays today. Um, Casey Lee is having a birthday and Matthew's having a birthday. And then um, tomorrow we will have Gage having a birthday. Okay, happy birthday to all of you. So we started to talk about the Gettysburg Address and remember I always said it's inside the Lincoln Memorial, all the words are inside the Lincoln Memorial. And we've learned the, Link the Gettysburg Address. And do you remember last year when we had, uh, it was September 11th, and we were all outside together, we recited the Gettysburg Address together. So I would like for us to do that today. Now remember, we did the beginning part, and you repeated after me, and I know some of you are new and you haven't learned this, but all of our students from last year and the year before, this is something that they have learned. And so once we're together all again, then we'll uh, practice this all together and you will learn it too. So let's recite it together. I'll start it and then you repeat, okay? Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this nation, I'm sorry, Let's start that over again. I made a mistake. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived or so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, 
We cannot dedicate. We cannot consecrate. We cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here, have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. That is a very powerful speech that still has so much meaning for us today. And as I told you, it's read at Ground Zero at 9-11 for uh, memorial celebrations there. Because it talks about how people who died there, we do not want them to have died in vain. That means that we don't want them to have died for no reason. That these people who gave their life on that day cause us, the living, to be dedicated to the purpose of promoting and keeping going the liberty and the freedoms that we have in our country. We wanna make sure that you, because when we say we the people of the United States, that's you. You're the people of the United States. All of us, that we are, do not forget that it's our responsibility to keep that, uh, the liberties and the freedoms that we have for our people, for ourselves and our posterity, right? For those who come after us, that we can never forget. So I'm gonna play a selection that we have for, uh, that Miss Neff has given us. And we want to listen to this, the words of this piece for today and keep it in our minds and hearts. So let's think on those freedoms. Um, President Ronald Reagan had said that we are only one generation away from losing our freedoms and our liberties. That it's our responsibility to maintain that for ourselves and our posterity. So be thinking on those things and your job as a citizen. And when you grow up, 
you will be in charge of the government. And that's why we are learning these things today here at Hojo Academy. So let's do our student pledge. I will do the good, I will learn the true, and I will love the beautiful. And I hope you have a great day and a great weekend.